Hello everyone and welcome to this Crazy Talk 7 introductory tutorial where we're going to get to know the environment and all the cool new features in Crazy Talk 7. So with Crazy Talk we can create a wide variety of projects from singing actors Three o'clock in the morning baby You come dragging to my door to bewildered youngsters. Hello? Is, is there anyone here? Or sarcastic pets. Dear Diary, Day 784 of my capture. Wow. So in Crazy Talk 7, we have four main areas. The first one is the top toolbar. You go here to create all your original content, from your own actors to your own animation and eventually to exporting. Then we have the left side toolbar. Here we have a lot of functions like the move function which I can toggle with the M hotkey to move my actor. I can also toggle the rotate function with the R hotkey or the scale function with the S hotkey. There we go. If I would like to view my animations in full screen, I can toggle the full screen viewer and just play back. So, I wake up this morning and guess what I found? More green tea flavored cat bits. Ow, yuck! Don't <laughs> they get it? Ow. Okay. Um, we also have the classical Command Z keys for undo or Command Shift Z for redo. In the end, I can also use the home button to reposition everything to the original position. If I would like to open a new project, just press Command N for new. The next area is the content manager. Here you will find all the default content that comes with the software. So if I'm in the project tab, I will find all the default projects and I can also go to the custom tab where I can start saving my projects once I start creating them. The second tab is the actor tab. Inside you will see three folders, model, eyes, and teeth. So if I go to model, you will find all the characters. So I could drag and drop or just double click on one to bring it in, there we go, okay? And then I can use the backtrack button right up here to backtrack and I can go into the eye folder. Here I can find animal eyes, anime eyes, cartoon eyes, comic, or even human eyes. And I can choose one by double clicking or just drag and dropping to my actor. There we go. I can also do this, I can go back and I can go to the teeth folder. And the same thing, I can find teeth with braces, vampire teeth, or just plain normal teeth. The third tab is the voice script tab. Here we will find uh, both practice audio and sample files. So the practice audio is basically just um, audio files that have no animations. These are just plain um, audio files that we can use to animate. The sample files are files that contain both animation and audio. So I can double click on one. <laughs> and you can see that uh, you, we could hear the audio and you can see the animation. Now, if I go back to the practice audio, these are just audio files. And when I double click on one, you'll see that a little menu pops up. This is because Crazy Talk 7 now has a feature that allows me to create animations from a simple audio file. So I can choose if I want to create a lip sync only, which will only animate the mouth, or if I want to use the listen mode. Listen mode will basically have my actor react to that original act, uh, audio as if somebody is talking to him. And I can also use a talk mode, which will combine both uh, a lip sync that will be generated and an animation that will be generated based on that sound. So let's first try to create a lip sync animation. Well, the good news is that you'll survive the operation. So I just created a lip sync and if I go down here to the timeline we will see that we have four main tracks. I have the audio track which is where the audio file is in. I also have the motion clip track for independent animations. 
the outer motion track, which are generated from the, the audio files, and then the music track. So let me expand this, okay? And uh, inside the audio track, as I mentioned, you have the audio file. But if I click on this button, we will open the lips track. Inside, you can see all the lip syncs that were automatically generated by Crazy Talk. So I can choose, I can double click on one, and this will open the phonem library. And you can see the mouth of the character now. I could choose a different phonem for that specific audio segment. And these are automatically generated. Now, if I would like to create my own lip syncs, I can do that. Just go to the left side here, and you can toggle, toggle the lip sync uh, function. And then the phonem library will open again, and I can drop in the lip syncs that I think are appropriate for that uh, audio segment. We're going to cover more of this in detail in other tutorials. So let me close this up. Let me restart the project. So this is lip syncing. If I go back and I click on an audio file again, and this time I will choose a listen mode. So let's see what happens. Well, the good news is that you'll survive the operation. Okay. As you can see at the bottom, there was no lip sync created. And in the auto motion, we can see that it says listen mode. So the listen mode was created in this track. If I go back and now I choose a talk mode, you will see that we will create both a lip sync and the auto motion at the bottom. Well, the good news is that you'll survive the operation. Now the bad news is that I'm not really a doctor. So now that we know what an auto motion is, we can go to the auto motion tab in the content manager. Inside we will find three folders, functional, scenario, and idle. Functional is for very basic auto, auto motion templates. So for example, if I want my head to be popping forward, I can double click on this. Well, the good news is that you'll survive the operation. Okay. Um, if I go back and I go to the scenario folder, I will find four other folders. These are for very specific auto motions. So if I want to generate an auto motion where my character is talking, I can go into this folder and choose one. If I want him to be singing in different styles, I can choose one too. Or reacting to human sounds like coughing. Or even if I just want the actor to react to the audio as if somebody is talking to him. Just like we did for the listen mode before. So I can choose that. Well, the good news is that you'll survive the operation. Okay, just like the doctor is talking to him. Next is the motion clip tab. The motion clips are independent animations that have nothing to do with the original audio file. So for example, I can choose this yawning motion clip by double clicking on it. Well, the good news is that you'll survive the operation. And then I have the facility, when it's down here in the track, in the motion clip track, I have the facility of moving this motion clip to anywhere I want. Another cool thing is that I can hover over a specific point in this motion clip and I can right click to open the menu and I can choose to break this motion clip in two. Then I could delete this one if I choose to. Okay. In Crazy Talk 7 we also have a loop function for these motion clips and a speed function. So for example I want if I would like to copy paste this motion clip down here the same motion clip then I can toggle the loop function, grab the end, and just stretch it over. And now, I will repeat this motion clip as the animation plays. Well, the good news is that you'll survive the operation. Now the bad news is that I'm not really a doctor. Okay. If I would like to undo that, Command Z. And now I want to toggle the speed function. Now with the speed function, I can literally stretch or compress this motion clip to make it faster or slower. So let's stretch it out to make it last longer. And now it's going to be slower. Well, the good news is that you'll survive the operation. Now the bad news is that I'm not really a doctor. And there you go. With Crazy Talk 7, I also have the ability to go into the toolbar down here and I can click on the time option if I want to view it in time units or in frames. Likewise, if I want to work in frames and I want to go to a specific frame, let's say frame 90, I can just go down here and type in frame 90. This is very useful when I'm doing precise editing. So the last tab is the background tab. 
here I can find several backdrops I can use from the default folder. I can choose a nightclub or a blue backdrop if I choose to. Alternatively, if I want to import my own backgrounds, I can do that. Just go up here to the background settings, import an image, then I'll go into my folder and I can double click on one. And now I have my own background. The last thing is that in Crazy Talk 7, we can dock and undock your own workspace. So I can go to the toolbar and I can drag this and now I can dock it onto the right side. Or I can grab the content manager and bring that to the left side also. I can grab the timeline and bring this to the top. And now I have the facility of customizing my own workflow, my own workspace to my own style. So thank you for watching this Crazy Talk 7 tutorial and stay tuned for a lot of new ones that are coming up soon.